Okay, welcome back, and we're live. And um, sorry for wasting all that time yesterday. It turned out to be a small little issue. I didn't have the W in the open. So it had nothing to do with the file path, and um, I'm ready to launch this tool. I am going to be still updating it and playing with it, uh, enhancing it, let's say. But let's get it, to, uh, let's launch it and show how it works, and then see if uh, we can make it a little bit better. So if you just bear with me, I have to do an audio check, make sure that this sounds good. Yeah, okay. And let me share it on the socials. Twitter. Yeah, Fish Launch Party. And LinkedIn. Yeah, Fish Launch Party. And this is a party. This is supposed to be fun. Uh, I'm excited about this, and it is open source, and everyone will be able to use it. So um, I'll just give it a couple minutes and let people join the stream, and then we'll get going on the explanation of the code and everything. But it's all ready to go right now. Um, the only thing I'm missing is save volumes. And I'll play with that today after we run this a couple times. And I'm also going to go get some more questions from... So we're going to look at batfish questions. I have a couple, but we're going to add some more. And I know these are working. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a couple more questions that I wanted to add um, under configuration properties. We're going to do undefined references. Okay. And we're also going to do the other unused structures. Now these will be empty, hopefully, if it's a valid config, but these will kind of show us if there's anything that's unused reference-wise in our configuration, which is a good validation. So I'm just going to add that here as a test. And we're going to do at a test.test define, and this will be undefined references. Hey, Omar, thanks for joining. Good to see you, too. So we're just adding a couple of more questions, and then we're going to run this code. So we're going to change this to self.interface, not interface, undefined result. Equals self.bfq. And then save the results of that test. Save undefined results. Undefined results. Undefined results. The other thing I'm going to do while I'm in here, refactoring, I'm going to copy this whole thing and just change the test to unused structures here unused structures Stephen no we're good I know this works I, I didn't launch but if um, I do need help from the audience if you want to start helping me figure out how to volume mount this properly I know the output is inside the container I'd like to mount it to an external volume ideally this output folder inside of my, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. So this is unused structures. Oh, and here I have to change the name of the file. And what I, I so let me just hang on a second here. This is going to be undefined results, but I'm, I'm not quite done here yet. And this will be unused structures. Now, if I'm running this at scale, unfortunately, I would be overwriting these files. So what we're going to do is we're going to find that and replace it with the device alias first. I think it's self.device.alias. underscore
because if I'm doing this at scale, we want what happened here? I don't think I wanted that. What did that look like? Just hang on a second. Uh, snapshot configs device alias dot config. I'm not sure how that got screwed up. Okay, so all I wanted to do was add the device alias to the output. Okay, so this is ready to run, ready to go. And thanks for joining everybody. Fingers crossed, I get it. So we're gonna build it. And what I found is that we can just build it and I was in the wrong folder. We can just build it and it'll cache up until my Unix, which means my, my copy isn't cached either. So that's gonna save a lot of build time. And now let's just make sure I don't have any extra containers running here. All right, so we kind of, I don't want to say have to be quick, but what we're going to do is we're going to run it, bring it up, and we're going to take a look at it, and we're going to switch over to the, um, the Docker viewer. So let's watch it run, and we'll look at the output, and then we'll start it again and, and, and actually look at the, so here's the job running. Here's our file path thing. It's going to be just fine. Okay, so we're going to look at this after. Okay, so my new unused structures had an error, but all my other ones are fine. Undefined results was fine. I have to look at... I've made a mistake here somewhere. That's fine on line 108. But anyway, so what happens here is we get the show run, okay, and we save this as .cfg in the in the configs folder. We make our connection here, establishing connection, connection passed, and you can see that Batfish loads 71 questions that we can then use and ask. And then I start my init snapshot. I initialize my snapshot. And you can see that it's um, working with the snapshot here. Snapshot initializing info. Questions answered successfully. Now it does throw some warning here. Fail to recognize some lines in one or more of the input files. So don't worry about that, but it does throw a warning. And then we look at node properties, right? Answering node properties question. Hey, Ratty. And then questions answered successfully. And then we get the output file, save those results. We do it again for interface properties, undefined references, unused structures. Now what's wrong with line 108 here? Let's go take a look at that and rebuild it. Line 108, what's the problem here? to CSV. Oh, I see, because I didn't change the name here. It should be unused results. Okay, that's better. To unused structures to undefined results yeah okay little mistake there so let's do it again and let's get that full answer so I'm just going to nuke those containers and I didn't push anything up to my repository that's another step we won't do until we know it's absolutely correct so I've saved a lot of build time here so I should be able just to build it it'll cache everything except for my new code wonderful and then we can bring it up and what we're going to do this time is go into my docker view here and we're going to go into the container and we're going to open some of these files if we're quick enough. Yatfish, output. So I should start getting some output in this folder. Here they are. All right, so here is the Batfish interface properties. 
CSV. It gives me an HTML as well. And it gives me another file format. So it's all working. Um, now, it's all gone because the container went down. So what we need to do now is get the volumes working. And I think, I think all I need to do here is, uh, is add a volume called Yatfish. And then add a volume here that maps Yatfish output to, is that right? Hang on, I gotta look up the syntax of volumes here. And if anybody knows, if anyone has some experience with Docker volumes, I have done this. Actually, hang on, let me go look at one of my other repositories. And I don't know that I'll be able to figure this out from this Docker Compose. But I think I have volumes in this one. So Docker Compose here. So here's a volumes example. And in my case, it should be Yatfish output mapping to. Now, locally, I guess that's slash var. Lib postscript. So am I mapping that the right way? Is the left side what's in the container and the right side what I want to map locally? PG admin. So that's just the name of the container in this case, mapping externally. So I need to figure out should it be like that? And then I guess it would be at fish again, right? Because I have yat fish output. Is this accurate? Does anyone know if this is a way to map this volume? Let's try it. So let's um, nuke the containers. I have volumes here. Okay, so. Okay, so it has the files. Okay, so I do have them here. But I can't do anything with them. Oh, save as. So I can bring them out through my Docker. So the volume, I do have the volume sort of going there. So let me bring down the volumes. I see. Okay, so Docker compose down volumes. Okay, so we're going to start fresh here and we're going to bring it up now. Do I need to rebuild it? I don't think I need to rebuild it. Let's just, it should all be cached. Yeah, okay. So it's just my Docker Compose that changed. So now let's see if this volume thing works. And you know what? If I have to save them through my Docker Compose, if it doesn't map them right into here, I'm okay with it as long as I can get the files and show you what these things look like. But it would be nice if I could map them right to this output folder. If anyone wants to look up Docker volume mounts, it doesn't look like that worked in terms of they're not in this folder. So that didn't, that didn't look like it worked. Do I have, yeah, and I have trouble getting my Ubuntu to launch when I have the containers. I'm like, can I launch another? Okay, here we go. Um, yeah, it's not, it doesn't seem to be mapping to that folder, but, but I can go in here and go to the data. Oh. <laughs> So now I screwed up my volumes command. Where'd the data go? It worked just a second ago. 
So I have to figure out this volume command. Oh boy. It's funny because it clearly worked in one of my attempts earlier today because I had the data here in Docker desktop volumes, but I'm not sure what I changed to make it. Let's try that. And let's just try Yatfish output. Well, at least it's fast iterations now, right? I just have to hack away at the volumes here and then bring it up and see if it worked. Really, it'd be nice to map that to this output folder locally. But all the Batfish parts working, PyTS parts working, it's just a matter now of getting it to map it out where I can see the data. Come on. Do I have to go into this container? And look at the files or something to make it available? If they're all there, I'd love to see these files mapped. And here's my volumes. Anyway, what we can... Oh, no. See, it just dies. Ah! So close again. All right, let's let's look up the volumes documentation again. Well, it is ready to go. I just need to get this stupid Docker volumes mount. I don't really want to mount a route like I want to. So I just call this Yatfish and map that to Yatfish output. There we go. There we go. Okay. Awesome. All right. So now what we can actually do is look at some of these. Here's our output. So we've run four batfish questions, interface properties, and we have three file types, node properties, undefined results, and unused structures. So um, I don't think these map to my output folder, but at least we have them mapped here in Docker Desktop. So what we can do is, um, can I save all of them? No, I guess not. Let's take a look at interface properties. And um, I see, so it takes me to my Docker folder. Hmm. 
Give me one second. Yeah, this will just take a second and I'll put all this output in. And I'll leave this as part of the repo, I guess, as examples of the output that we get. That's not a bad idea. Um, and if I leave the Docker Compose, then at least people can get out their results through the, uh, through the volume mount. Okay, so that works. That's not bad. It's too bad I can't mount it right into the repository's folder structure, but I'll take this. And then we'll hop back into VS Code. Hey, Michael, how are you? If anyone has any questions, if anyone got here late, I am happy to go over it again, but let's look at the output. So, the CSV file, and we're gonna preview it, has, right, the index, the interface, and device. If it had a VLAN, if it's active, if it's admin up, all the prefixes, all the allowed VLANs, Auto state VLAN, bandwidth blacklisted, channel group information, DHCP relay, declared names, descriptions, encapsulation, right? And this is just from the running config, right from the device. All this great information. So we could, um, you know, and change this config and, and run this again, add different questions. We could probably put all 71 questions right to make this universal because I don't have BGP or OSPF configured but there are questions for those things and there's VLAN questions so maybe we'll enhance this with more questions maybe add some config and see what it gives us but that's interface properties and then again we get it as an HTML page as well where's my um... Sorry, I have a new WSL install. I got to put that extension on. So there it is as a web page, and that's just from the data frame. We don't have to change anything else about the uh, the code. And there's the JSON. Now I may be able to JSON dump this and indent it and and um, uh, sort it. So maybe we'll add that as an enhancement instead of this big flat JSON file. And then again, node properties, and this is the properties of the actual node and all this great stuff just from the running config. And then, you know, they're empty because it's a pretty empty config. And then, un so there is no undefined results. This is good. This is something I maybe if I load the dictionary, I could test each of these and if they're defined, fail the test because there is an undefined reference. If I follow this up with a PyETS test, right? We could test each of these and make sure that there's nothing that's undefined and make sure again, similarly, that there's nothing unused. So working well, um, we can add more questions if you want. So let me hop on the device and see if I can try something. I don't know if I can do this on this particular device. So we're gonna go prompt T VLAN 10. No. I don't think I can add VLANs to this because it's a router, it's on a switch. Um, here's what I'm gonna do. I this is the single device, and this will just this is is gonna take a little bit of time. And I hope it works out. But I'm going to cancel my sandbox. And I'm going to open up a new sandbox with multiple devices on it. Uh, the CML sandbox. Because then I can actually make my test bed with, you know, two or three or four devices. And analyze each of the configs. And also see how it works with, say, NXOS config and iOS XE config. If it can handle both. And then... Um, what we can do is uh, add VLANs to the switches, the, the NXOS devices, and then add the VLAN tests. And maybe if OSPF is running, we can add the OSPF tests. So it's gonna take a second for this to tear down. And again, let me do a recap. Now I can't run it because it's down, 
but let's do the code tour now that I've got 10 people watching. Um, I'm going to get, I'm going to have to sign up for the new sandbox. It's going to take a few minutes to start up, but here's the code. So starting at the top down, we've got the Docker file that brings in a few things. It's from Ubuntu. We update Ubuntu. We install wget, and I don't think I need wget anymore, but it is there. Then we install sudo. We install python3, pip, open ssh, which we need for pyts to establish ssh connections. Pyts full, batfish. Copy in our scripts, copy in our batfish, our yatfish. I use dos to unix to run my bash scripts. There may be a better way, but that's just sort of how I do it. And then my command when this container runs is a startup.shell file, which is in scripts startup.sh. I change directories into yatfish, and I pyets run job yatfish.job, which looks like this. Standard job file, I load my testbed.yaml file, and then I call my pyets job, or my pyets code in the framework of pyets jobs. Testbed looks like this. I'm going to add four devices or three devices once I get the CML up. Now, in terms of the actual code, it's not hard. It's pretty straightforward. Um, it doesn't look like I'm using OS or JSON, but I'll leave those in there for now. Logging for PyTS logging. Pandas for PD, which we're not actually using, I don't believe, directly, but we'll leave it in there. PyTS AE test for our testing. Banner for the nice banners. And then all of this comes from the batfish, pi batfish readme file, right from the top of the documentation, right? Copy in this and pandas. This is just setting up the log. And then the two directories we need, the snapshot folder, the notorious snapshot folder, and output folder. We have a class here, common setup, where we're connecting to our test bed, looping over each device in the test bed. And then finally, we're going to set each device as self.device through the loop. And we're already connected to it. So we're going to execute show run, save that into our snapshot path slash configs as a dot CFG, establish our connection to Batfish, initialize our snapshot, start asking questions and outputting the answers. And this all works very well. And then we finally disconnect from the devices. So that's the code. That's it. That's all we're doing. So what we're going to do is add more questions, hopefully for this new topology. So um, let's go question shopping, I guess. While I'm waiting for my sandbox, I should keep that open. So I know when it's down and when I can request my new one. Okay, it's down. All right, so that's going to go here. I'll show you the nice magic sandbox I like to use this CML. Now the enterprise tends to be busy. I can try it, but if this hangs for a while, then I know that it's just overbooked. People just hold on to this particular enterprise CML, but we might get lucky. I don't know. I doubt it. Just by this taking so long, I'm pretty sure it's going to be already booked. All right, to not waste time, let's go back and just grab the first CML, which is fine. There's no big difference. I'm going to just bump up the time a little bit here. Now, while this spins up, I may just step away and use the washroom and, and get a drink. So this is going to be nine minutes of setup. It's not a bad little break in the middle of this. Everything's working. I'm just going to try it at scale now and hopefully add some stuff like OSPF or... Um, port channels or who knows so go get yourself a drink as soon as this sandbox is up and running um, I will um, I may have to black out my screen to get the password and, and so you don't see it although it does time out so I'm not too worried if my password for this four-hour session gets out so get a drink we're back in a couple minutes when we have the sandbox
All right, so five minutes to go in here. Thanks for, you cannot create one or more of the resources already reserved. Is that an error on my setup? I don't think so, I hope not. And I'll get my email in a second. We'll leave our questions up here. Let's just go back to the high level questions and we'll look at some of the questions we're gonna be able to ask it once we have a, an actual topology here. So four minutes, we're just gonna to have to hang tight. Have I flushed my images? So I'm gonna to have to flush all that. Those I've, I've saved copies of those files. So let's stop them, delete them, flush the images, and bring down the volumes. There's nothing to modify. Well, maybe some more questions in the code. Kind of go down to about here to modify. Kind of neat that we get HTML pages right out of the... By the way, I'll show you, in case you're new today and you didn't see that yesterday. If you look up data frame 2 CSV or whatever, they're bringing to this pandas data frame. And I'll show you how this works. See how we're asking not just for the answer, but for the frame. And that's on each of them. Right? And that's where this pandas comes in. And this is the pandas data frame library. Right? So what I've done so far is to CSV, to, to JSON, and to HTML. Now... With the JSON, I may do a JSON dump of it and make it a little prettier in the output file. We talked about that. Um, I don't know. Um, does that have... Can I do it directly in here to JSON? Indent. Here we go. I could say like indent for... And is there sort keys? So let's update that to JSON to have the indent for. I don't see a sort keys though, unless that's what index means. Or index is that first index, I guess, that we could take out if we don't want it. All right, so let's add at least the indent. And what we're going to do is find so I guess it's like this is it a number and then equals four I think so do I do that in, in Brainiac I think it's a number, yeah. Integer, yeah. Length of white space used to indent each record. Pretty sure that should make it look like nice JSON. We'll try it. We'll try it. If not, I'll do a JSON dump of that and um, make it look pretty myself. All right, how are we doing on the sandbox? Sort of filling time here. We're waiting for that. Less than a minute. Should get the email soon. We are setting up your network. And then I have to, I need this. I need this as a reference. So here's what we're going to have, everybody. We're going to have, and I typically don't mess with the XR devices. I don't even know if you can SSH into them. Um, and I don't know why they had this accessible with Telnet instead of SSH, but I think these two XRs are Telnet. Um, not SSH, but we're going to focus on these two, these four rather. 
the two XE devices and the two NXOS devices. And it does should have some OSPF running in here. And I should have VLANs in here. So it looks like we can add some more questions to our uh, our code. And the nice thing is if the questions are, don't, are empty, it just comes back empty. So there's no risk of us crashing our code if, um, if the question doesn't render anything. So I think I'm all done with this. I don't think I'm going to change it to any other um, type of output. We're good with the CSV, JSON, and HTML, I think. And we're going to look at some more questions. There's our topology. I need that for my testbed file. This is still just finishing up here. And I'm going to need to, and, and it probably needs a couple minutes to actually not just set up, but for CML to settle for the topology to come up inside. So we might have to be patient here, even once this setup is done. So we're going to go to the modeling lab server as well. Okay, it's up. And this is what CML looks like in case you've never been in CML. I'm just going to copy the password. It's developer here. And this is the topology, which is still probably initializing inside. So we have to just wait and be patient for these devices to come up. And we can terminal into them. So let's just take a look at the router. And it's likely just booting up. So we need to give these things a couple of more minutes, unfortunately. start building our testbed file while we're waiting. Let's do that. Uh, testbed. So it's dist router 01. Router iOS XE. And I think it's just Cisco Cisco here. Yeah. And it's 10 uh, 10, 10, 2175. All right, so then we can copy the disk router one. One seventy six. Disk router two, and then we can copy both of these. And we'll have to make sure we can SSH into all four of them before we get going. I've had some random problems with these sandboxes where sometimes you can't actually get into all of them. And that's a switch. And this is actually NXOS. And this is a uh, N9KV, I think. I don't think that really matters. Uh, so that's 177. Switch, 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 NXOS, N9KV, 178. Is that right? 77, 78. Okay, so our test bed, whoops, test bed file is good. And how are we making out with our routers and switches? Okay, so there we go. That's better. That one's coming up. We're trying to get started. So that one's at the login prompt. This one's also at the login prompt. The Nexus is take a little while, little while, little while longer to fire up. So 
So we'll just give those some time. And let's see, can we SSH into these yet? Okay, 175 is good. 176 is also good. So a good start. We've got two devices up. Well, come on, don't hang on me now. Okay, good. Okay, so two for two. Now, what about the Nexus? Are they still booting? Still booting. Well, what we can do, though, is just comment out the Nexuses for now and give this a dry run with two devices. And I need to rebuild it because I have a new testbed file, right? Did I not take the volumes down? Well, let's see what happens. I'll have to take the volumes down and flush that. And what I'm hoping is that I get, you know, disk one and disk two. It looks like it's gone through both sets of devices. There we go. Disk one, disk two. So it works at scale. And um, we're going to have to look at some of this. Um, output so let's just hop on one of them and do a show run and the next ones are NXOS I'm really curious how they work out with their answers so what do we have on here anything that we can test so it looks like there's a VRF definition interfaces we're already testing there's a route that's funny there is no OSPF even though the diagrams oh yeah there's an OSPF here so we can add OSPF tests and possibly VRF tests all right now let's see is the mm -hmm. NXOS up yet One seventy seven. Okay, I don't have a console yet. Okay, yeah, so, so, so 77 is answering. Good. The 78 is still coming up. 78 is up. All right, awesome. All four sandboxes are up. So let's try that before we do anything else. Let's, let's, um, and then we'll actually look at the Nexus's output. So that's going to be the switch's output. And I think all I need to do now, oh, I need to save it. I need to rebuild it. Let me bring the volumes down. I guess I could nuke the volumes there, but let me just do it this way. Okay, there we go. All right, so I'm going to build it again. Pretty fun, pretty exciting, right? Pretty cool tool. I didn't add anything yet. I want to run it and see what the uh, NXOS evaluations look like. So we're going to bring it up, and this will be four devices this time. <clears throat> yeah, just switch 01, I see in there.
Rotor one, rotor two, switch one. Is switch two hanging? Oh, there's switch two. Is it gonna connect? I might have to comment out switch two. I don't know, it doesn't look like it's see connection refused. Okay, so I got a connection refused from switch two. Why? I just signed into it. Alright, so switch two is not happy. Uh, let's reload it and comment it out. Yeah, it's just not happy right now. Stupid thing. Alright, let's comment it out. Try it with three devices. I really want to see what the uh, that it evaluates NXOS as well as iOS XE, sort of agnostically. And this would be this will tell me. Come on. Sometimes the credential store is weird with this Docker. Docker's been flaky all around today. Uh, originally, my WSL2, the Ubuntu image checkbox for integration was unchecked and I didn't uncheck it it was just not connected to Ubuntu okay so all three devices worked and here comes our results and then we'll look into the docker volume look there's the the NXOS config so let's go into the volumes This router switch a one. Let's look at the node properties. And let's see if the JSON Okay, so look at um, indent four made it like a nice pretty JSON, which is really nice. That's excellent. And this is the JSON payload for NXOS. So it did read it, and look at all this great information. So these are the node properties. All this great stuff, right? Routing policies, VRFs, zones. So it works NXOS iOS XE. All right, now let's hop on that NXOS that's up. Is 178 back yet? No, I, okay. And are there VLANs on this thing? I think there are. So it's got BPC, VRFs, lots of VLANs. So we can add, and it has HSRP too? All right, this will be a gold mine for um, OSPF HSRP. All right, so let's go. Let's go question shopping. Let's bring everything down. Bring our volumes down. Nuke our containers. Oh, and I see these are getting built into my container now. I should delete these. Yeah, okay, I gotta be careful about that. So we're gonna build. No, we're not, we're not there yet. Sorry, excuse me, I got a little sidetracked. Uh, we want more questions. 
All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to copy these two. And what we're going to do next is, so there's a couple things that we had, right? We had OSPF, HSRP, VLANs. Right under configuration properties, there's HSRP properties. Let's do that one because we saw that on the NXOS. So that's HSRP. So there's OSPF process, interface, and area. There's no reason why we shouldn't do all of them. All right, so I'm going to split screen this. And we're just going to pump this full of configuration tests. So this one's going to be OSPF process. Yeah, this will be good. This will be really good. And then the next one is OSPF interface. And I don't know that I, I have any interfaces that are running OSPF, but we can test for it anyway. I'm going to try to make this as universal as possible. I mean, I could put the BGP tests in. I could put all the tests in. Um, I don't have any BGP in this particular example, but maybe you do. So this is OSPF interface result. And then there was OSPF area. So I'll do the ones that I can cover, and if anybody wants to um, patch in, right, it's open source. If anybody wants to actually do BGP or whatever, feel free to patch it in. And, okay, so that was OSPF, the three of those. HSRP. We did. Lags, I don't think I have any port channels. Um, now what is named structures? I'm gonna leave that one out. Uh, VLAN properties is the other one we wanted. Switched VLANs, okay. And then what we'll do is pull all these files out and then I'll wrap this code up and get it into your hands for you to play with. And um, for as far as the test bed goes, when I push this code, I'll probably leave the test bed. That way you can see if you want to run the, um, you know, spin up your own sandbox. You can. And I've got to feed my, feed my dogs and take them out. So the timing is pretty good. I got to wrap this up pretty soon. And we don't do any VRRP. I don't see any VRF.
Sorry about the dogs, everybody. Um, so... That router's still down. All right, so we have everything we need to do our new analysis. So let's build this. And uh, let's bring it up. Okay, so this should loop over the three and all the questions like we're going to see a whole bunch of new questions and file output so we're running this on three devices it's actually pretty fast given it's doing this hey chad good to see you thanks for joining so here comes all the analysis now including our new analysis all of this outputs being saved Yeah, look at it fly. VLAN properties, OSPF properties, disconnecting from devices. So let's look at the table here, the PyETS table. So everything passed. And you can see all these are individual tests that we've done, right, for each device in our loop. So let's look at our volumes. and here is all the stuff now this might take me a while to save all this stuff but let's just see what the new ones are so let's look at the hsrp area results okay the router might not yeah let's just keep saving these and take a look process results and i'll look at the json as opposed to the other files. You can kind of get a sense on what the other files look like. I don't think there's any VLANs on the router. So then we need to go to um, the switches here. Here we go. The switch has HSRP. And the switch has VLANs and OSPF area. And then we'll take a peek at these files. Okay, so HSRP, because the router doesn't have it. So here's the active interfaces for OSPF area. That's cool. Process ID, DRF, node, area type is none, and there's no passive interfaces. So that's the area analysis. Here's the process analysis. We have the process, the router, the, the BRF, the areas, reference bandwidth, router ID for each instance. Is it an ABR? No. And it doesn't have VLAN. So here's the switch. So here is the HSRP group IDs, virtual addresses, source addresses, priorities, preempt, and active for each one of the HSRP instances. Area results, here's all the OSPF stuff. Passive interfaces on the VLANs, that's cool. OSPF interfaces, here's all the interfaces in the process and area if it's enabled passive network type on each of them. Hello interval on each of them. Dead interval, pretty cool. Pretty deep analysis here. And here's the VLANs. Pretty neat, right? Pretty neat. Now, we could build on this and start sending it state information as well, which I might do maybe next weekend. But I'm going to wrap this up. Now, I'm going to nuke this output. And is there anything I need to do for the readme file? Not much, right? Docker compose up. Six in Docker desktop volumes. Yeah, fish volume data save as to retrieve 
analysis. If there's a better way to mount the volume, I'm open to it, but I'm happy with that. There's nothing confidential in here or secret or anything. I'm ready to push this up and publish my Git repository. And I thank you for joining me over this weekend. I know yesterday kind of sucked with some of the um, <laughs> file path stuff, which turned out not to be the file path at all. Yeah, no problem, Michael. Thanks for joining. Uh, what's going on in here? All right, so I want to... The terminal died on me. And everything's gone, right? Yeah, so Docker down, volumes. Docker, compose, down, volumes. Um... Let's build it one last time here. Docker build tag. And let's, well, I don't need to know cache it. Let's just build it and then let's push it so that you can use this. So the only thing you need to do if you want to do it yourself is update this testbed file. Um, and it'll work with the, the topology as is. Or you may want to uncomment out this switch or maybe point this at your own testbed file and build this and then point this tool and get the Batfish analysis of your own network topology. All you would need to do is swap out that testbed file, recompile it, bring up the Docker, and uh, away it goes, and then start saving the files. I'm gonna maybe do some research on Docker, Docker volume mounts and see if I can sort that out. Um, but this is all ready to go. Working initial commit. And actually, I'm gonna update the readme file to say, Batfish questions asked for configuration. in the readme file so everybody knows exactly what analysis you're going to get when you run this. I should add the BGP. I really should. Maybe next weekend I'll patch that in. It's hard for me to do stuff when I don't actually have a working working output to know that it works to patch it in, you know what I mean? Oh, and I don't want self. I think that's all of them. Okay, so that's all in main, everybody. So if you want to access this repository, you're going to go to github.com slash automate your network. And I'm going to actually put this on my front page because it's new and shiny. I'm going to give it a star and organize my pins and add Yapfish. So it's right here on my main page. Give it a star, give it a pull, try it out with the Docker Compose. Thank you, happy Easter, and we'll see everybody soon. Thanks again. Steven, thanks again for joining, man. Good to see you. Michael, Chad, Raddy, Omar, thank you. We'll see you all soon.